in fact not at all good, okay popular ones fixed effect panel data model so what it does is it treats the unobserved individual heterogeneity we talked about unobserved individual heterogeneity in the last slide right and when it denoting is alpha i so we had denoted as ci let's not confuse with the notations the same right we're just changing notations okay uh, so it's alpha i in this case so we'll not confuse it with the alpha i which is uh, the intercept here right so let's not confuse with that we'll keep on using a, a alpha i for on, on uh, the individual heterogeneity so we assume here is that the unobserved heterogeneity for each employee to be correlated with the explanatory variable or the independent variables okay so that's an assumption so we say that alpha i is very correlated with xi or xit okay so the correlation between uh, alpha i which is the individual heterogeneity is with the independent variables is non zero now this is an assumption okay if this happens we will be using fixed effect model now the, the obvious questions is like how do you know this is so uh, the estimation involves transformation to remove the unobserved effect pretty much like the uh, you know the first difference uh, estimation type here also we are going to uh, get rid of the alpha i term the unobserved effect before doing the estimation but there are other things as well we'll not go get into the details of the theory uh, you can always uh, get into the details of the theory on your own since this is an introduction i'll i'll show more about uh, you know the application of these things and and i'll talk briefly about the theory of course this is very complicated uh, theoretical uh, topic which needs to be studied in great detail i'm just giving you an introduction so fixed effect transformation will look something like this the original model is yit and then we have got uh, you know the unobserved effect let's ignore the intercept for the moment and then we have got uh, the you know the slope coefficient beta and then we have got independent variables and the error term when we average it right uh, average it over time we'll get rid of time component right I have told you uh, previously also if you have you know data for time t1 t2 t3 up to t7 you average it you get only one uh, value right and that doesn't have time right so yt yt minus 1 yt minus 2 it could be 1 to minus 7 because they've got seven data points for seven time periods if you average take the average you will have only one data right y bar which is which denotes the average and it doesn't have uh, t component it only has the cross section component i so we have averaged it out over time now we subtract okay now we subtract these two equations so the initial the first equation and the second one which is the average of the first equation okay remember the difference the difference is that here we have only cross section because it's an average over time so we've got rid of the uh, time component and here it has pure panel data okay so when you take the difference of that you will get certain kind of equation which is used for fixed effect estimation okay the interesting thing is that you know when you take the difference the unobserved effect alpha i will get cancelled right when you take the difference it is going to be zero alpha i minus alpha I is zero of course so that is totally out of question uh, out of the equations now the estimation will be uh, you know possible so we're getting rid of uh, by eliminating the alpha I in this case and the LH side is known as the time demean y okay so these are technical terms that you need to remember time demean nothing but you know getting rid of time so technically we call it as time demean Similarly, we're also getting rid of time demean uh, or we are having time demean x values, independent variables as well as the error term. Now let's apply this concept to our case study, right? That one that we have taken. Now on the time demeaned data, we can actually use the OLS regression. Okay. Why? Because when you have time demeaned data, 
your errors will not be correlated correlated over time because you have only cross section error i j k and so on so you don't have error like you know uh, u i t u i uh, uh, you know j t and then u i t minus 1 u j t minus 1 so we expect the care these to be correlated because there is a time component over time right like the salary of the same person over time okay salary of the person one okay person one for time time one and salary of the same person in time two will most likely to be correlated now since we have got rid of the time component that thing is not going to be there. So errors are not going to be correlated over uh, in this particular case. So we can use OLS now. So by doing this transformation and using OLS, we are estimating the equation. So this is all theory, right? So just for your understanding how fixed effect estimation is done, uh, this, is, this is a broad overview of fixed effect uh, estimation. I recommend you to study more about it to understand more about it how it is different from the ordinary least square estimation how the transformation is actually helping us using ordinary least square estimation while doing the fixed effect uh, estimation model so let's use it in uh, for our data set syntax remains same that we have been using so far the model type is now within now the fixed effect is also known as within effect okay so fixed effect is same as within effect okay so let's not get confused in this case let's look at the results now in the results we can see that there are two important variables which are significant one is experience the other one is projects as expected right? these two are very important variables for somebody's salary right uh, so they're coming out of a significant. What about the R square? Now the R square is 0.65. Adjusted R square is 0.56. Now that is significantly higher than the R squares that we have seen in the previous three models. Right? Why it is so? Because now we are using the correct uh, uh, methodology. Right? So if you use the right uh, estimation technique the right uh, model uh, for the data will have a better R square a better fit rather okay so this is a better fit to the data previously we were not using we were using the wrong models for for panel data so we weren't using panel data model so this is the panel data model and that's why we have got the better result the reason, I mean, if when you are doing in practice, you need not have to try, you know, all three uh, types of estimation that I showed you in the beginning. The reason I showed you is to give, uh, you know, uh, give uh, a comparison study, a comparative uh, reason study as to how OLS is different from uh, the panel data analysis and how we can actually empirically show that the panel data models are better fit to the panel data than the OLS models. So how do we interpret? Now education is dropped. That is fine because education doesn't change over time. When we have taken the average, of course, it is not going to be there because education doesn't over change over time for a particular portion, most likely. So it's it gets dropped. Experience has a positive effect on log salary, and the R square value is pretty good. So that shows that it's a good model. The next one and the last estimation technique that we will be using, which is always um, compared with the fixed effect model, is the random effect estimation. And in panel data analysis, you will always be trying either fixed data estimation, uh, fixed effect estimation, or random effect estimation. Now the fundamental difference between the fixed uh, effect estimation and random effect estimation is that it assumes that the individual specific effects, 
the unobserved effect i'm talking about the alpha eyes are independent of the regressor okay or the correlation between alpha i and xi is zero in fixed effect we had non zero value in random effect it is zero so that's the fundamental difference between a random effect estimation and the fixed effect and estimation okay uh other than that there are um you know there are uh, other fundamental uh, differences as well um especially you know doing the inference uh, whether it's you know doing the inference for population statistics uh, and there will be several questions related to when to use random effect and when to use uh, fixed effect and it's important one and in the last part of this presentation i'll talk about how to decide which one is better right fundamentally we know the assumptions are different but how do we know that the uh, there is that exists correlation between you know the alpha i and xi do you have to do it first before uh, you know deciding on which one is to be used we'll see that so let's use this first we use the uh, you know the statement model equal to random in this case the rest of the syntax remains same and where we are getting here is that uh, experience is significant uh, education is also significant but the r square value is uh, going down yeah it's 42 percent now so previously we used to have 65 percent it has gone down but uh, you know just by looking at the r square we cannot say that which one is is the best model because uh, best model for this particular data we have to verify it statistically so now we have come down come down to two models one is fixed effect model and the one is random effect model and we'll see which one is most suitable for uh, our data which one fits our data the best okay for that we'll do the uh, lm test so lm test uh, is used to decide whether uh, you should uh, you know your your data fits random effects versus the ols okay um you might wonder that we are confused about random effect and uh, fixed effect where we testing with respect to OLS we'll see that okay so let's just bear with uh, uh, you know a few more slides we'll, we'll, we'll have everything in place so listen to me just you know a few more minutes and everything will be clear so the LM is used to decide between random effect regression and a simple ordinary least square regression okay and we'll be using the PLM test function uh, in order to do that the null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference across the cross section unit okay so that's the null hypothesis uh, which implies that the random effect model is inappropriate okay. so if we are in favor of null hypothesis then random effect is uh, inappropriate if we're not in favor of null hypothesis we're in favor of alternative hypothesis then we will see that random effect is appropriate okay when we do this so pool is the result that we have used previously right so we just use that and uh, we are using the function plm test so what we are getting here is that the p value is significant what does that mean so that means that uh, the null hypothesis is not in favor of the ols so what do we can uh, infer from this is that given the fact that the p-value is less than 0 0.05 which that means you know it gives us some kind of a significance so null hypothesis <coughs> uh, you know the importance of null hypothesis uh, uh, you know gives us the confidence that uh, random effect model is better against OLS okay so we'll go ahead with random effect model instead of OLS okay so just look at the p-value if it is uh, if it's less than 0.05 then go for random effects that's the uh, rule of thumb 